I'm Tamara Banks and welcome to Denver Decides. This community partnership is dedicated to accessible and transparent elections. This partnership includes the League of Women Voters of Denver, Interneighborhood Cooperation, and Historic Denver. Denver Decides is presented by Denver 8 TV. Our mission today is to present a candidate form in anticipation of the municipal election coming up on Tuesday, May 7th. Among other offices, this election includes the candidates for Denver Auditor. Our format includes timed opening and closing statements. That will be followed by rounds of questions that have been submitted by the organizers of the forum. The race for Denver Auditor only has one candidate this time around. So let's meet the unopposed candidate on the ballot for this seat, Timothy O'Brien. Welcome, Tim. Thank you. We'll begin with a one minute opening statement from you. So you may begin your opening statement. All right, well thank you very much, Tamara. And uh, thanks to the host for uh, hosting this and those of you who hung around to hear a little bit about the Denver Auditor. Um, I'm Tim O'Brien. I'm currently the Denver Auditor. I've been your auditor for the last three and a half years, and uh, I'm excited about the opportunity to continue being your auditor. Um, I think I am uniquely qualified for this position. I think I have the appropriate kind of experience for this position, and I think very important, uh, I am independent, of, of, I'm objective of the work that I do. Uh, and that is an important distinction uh, that I probably will talk about a little bit later. Um, I've enjoyed the last three and a half years as your auditor. I think there are things that we are doing that have never been done before in the Denver Auditor's Office, and there are things that I want to do that have never been done in the Denver Auditor's Office. So um, I look forward to continuing to serve. I'll thank you for your vote, and I would be honored to uh, continue serving as auditor. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll begin now with asking you a series of questions, and sure. you'll have one minute to answer each question. First question is, what, if any, city charter changes do you believe should be considered to improve the functions of the auditor? Oh, that's a very good question. Thank you for the question. Um, I think the city charter, uh, the, to improve the functions of the auditor, should read similar to the state constitution uh, the state constitution says that the state auditor shall be a certified public accountant licensed in the state of Colorado. I think the city charter should say that the Denver auditor should be a certified public accountant licensed in the state of Colorado. Um, I have come to work every day for the last three and a half years trying to prove that that is in the best interest of the city and county of Denver. It's in the best interest of the citizens uh, I think it makes for transparent and accountable government, uh, and I think that's something I would truly support, uh, constitutional change in that respect. All right, thank you. Our next question, what two performance audits during your term in office would you say have been the most significant? Oh, thank you for the question. Uh, that's a tough question to answer. Um, I think that we've had a lot of uh, audits. Actually, I think all the audits are good. Uh, which is more significant than another uh, is a difficult question, but I guess I would start with the audit that we did of Rocky Mountain Human Services. That's an agency that provides uh, service to the developmentally and intellectually disabled people in Denver. There's a mill levy of our tax dollars that goes to Rocky Mountain Human Services. Um, but I think, you know, we conducted that audit. We found a lot of things wrong, really with the governance all the way on down to how the operations were working. It resulted in some significant changes uh, in how Denver operates Rocky Mountain Human Services, but it also prompted the state legislature to enact a law to look at all the other community center boards around the state to see how they are operating. Right. Thank you. Our next question, Denver has passed a $15 minimum wage for all city contract and city workers. Our city is also undergoing some major capital construction and renovation projects, particularly in the airport and the Central 70 project. As the auditor, how will your office oversee these contracts and ensure that these workers are paid fairly? Um. Well, currently, the auditor is charged with enforcing the prevailing wage law in Denver. Uh, that law says that if there is a capital construction project, 
either using Denver dollars or on Denver property, that the service workers, the construction workers, have to be paid what's called the prevailing wage, and that's a number that we get from the federal government. Uh, we will now be enforcing the $15 an hour, uh, which I think goes into effect July 1st of this year, at $13 an hour, then to $14, then to $15 an hour. Uh, but we will enforce that with the same uh, diligence that we have the prevailing wage. Uh, I would say that um, in the past, before I took office, I think the prevailing wage enforcement was spotty. Um, I think today it is comprehensive in that we are covering every project, every contractor, and every person that is subject to the prevailing wage. We will do the same as it's outlined in the, the city ordinance for the $15 an hour. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And before we get to the next question, I just want to remind our viewers that uh, Timothy O'Brien is running unopposed, so that's why you only see one candidate up here. We didn't forget the others. <laughs> Moving on to the next question, Denver has raised sales taxes to fund several programs. The increases include raising taxes on recreational marijuana for affordable housing. What are your plans to audit those programs and follow those tax dollars? Um, thank you for the question. Uh, I like to say where your tax dollars go, the auditor goes also. And we will be auditing uh, those particular programs to, you know, to be sure that they are being carried out you know, with the intention that was in the uh, initiative that passed. Um, there are you know, the parks tax, there's a mental health uh, tax. There currently, which was uh, I think re-enacted uh, a few years ago, uh, a preschool tax. We are currently today conducting an audit of that preschool tax. So we will look at all taxes to be sure that they are being uh, collected and that the programs that they fund are being you know, carried out in accordance with the wishes of the taxpayer when they voted on that. Thank you. Next question, what are your plans for auditing Denver's cybersecurity and data security practices? Very good question. Um, that's one of the things that we have done uh, consistently since I took office. I know that these kinds of audits have not been taking place in Denver before. Uh, as long as I am the Denver Auditor, cybersecurity, data security will be a high priority uh, to make sure that, that the individuals in Denver who have personally identifiable information that the city and county of Denver keeps, that that data is kept safe you know, from outside intruders, hackers, identity thieves, whoever they are. That's a high priority of mine and it will continue to be. Thank you. Just a couple more questions for you. Uh, the agencies, agencies have challenged your authority to audit their operations. What do you see as the limits of what the Office of the Auditor can investigate? Um, that's a good question. Um, th there have been challenges to the auditor's authority, and I think I have prevailed on every one of those challenges. Uh, I think probably the genesis of those uh, challenges have been, these are agencies or departments that have never been audited by the Denver Auditor before. Uh, and, you know, I think the question on their part is, you know, so nobody else has audited us, why are you going to audit us? I think the Charter gives the Auditor pretty broad, comprehensive authority to audit your tax dollars to see that your government is operating uh, the way it is intended to operate. As to the limits on the uh, Auditor's authority, I don't think the auditor's authority is limited to the boundaries of the city and county of Denver. I mean, there are vendors that we have audit authority over uh, that may reside or do reside outside the city and county of Denver. Uh, and if we see a need, if we think there, there's risk there in terms of the program or taxpayer dollars, we'll conduct an audit. All right, so. thank you. Could the office of the auditor be helpful in suggesting cost savings for small businesses, improvements in their business practices? Well, the Office of the Auditor is helpful, I think, in, in making improvements for the business community in terms of how does Denver government interact with those businesses to make sure that, it's, that Denver is user-friendly, you know, whether you're getting a license, whether you're getting service from the city and county of Denver, whether you're, you know, the streets are patched appropriately in the city and county of Denver. 
So I think we do play a role in looking at various programs to see are they operating as intended, and, and if there are course corrections that need to be made, we make recommendations that I think improve the program, which improves you know, businesses, which improves services to the taxpayer. All right, thank you. So that's the end of our questions, and we move into the closing statement portion here. Sure. So you have a minute and a half for okay. your closing statement. Well, thank you. Um, again, Tim O'Brien, Denver Auditor, and candidate for Denver Auditor. Um, I am qualified for this position. Uh, I'm a certified public accountant. I hold the designations of Chartered Financial Analyst and Chartered Global Management Accountant. Uh, I have a bachelor's degree in accounting. I have an MBA. I have experience, and, and I would submit to you that there has never been anyone in the auditor's office that has had the kind of qualifications that I bring to the office today. Uh, my experience, I've been a CPA in Colorado for over 40 years. I was your Colorado State Auditor for over 11 years. I have been the author of probably, uh, conservatively, over 1,000 audit reports uh, dealing with government, dealing with the operations of government. Um, I don't know that anybody brings that kind of experience to the table. Um, independent of the work that we do, I have no conflicts of interest, um, and I would say, uh, I have been able to hire and retain some of the best people uh, that we could find in Denver. This, this group of people, whether it's prevailing wage enforcement or the audit staff, we have been recognized nationally as doing uh, distinguished work in the auditing field. We just got a, a recognition last week. Um, the prevailing wage team has received recognition about the exemplary work that they are doing and uh, personally I've received, received some recognition myself. So great team and uh, looking forward to continue to doing the job. All right, okay. thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Good luck to you. Mm -hmm. Our thanks to Denver Decides Partners, which include Interneighborhood Cooperation, the League of Women Voters of Denver, and Historic Denver. Denver Decides is pre presented by Denver 8 TV. Remember, the election is Tuesday, May 7th. Let your voice be heard. Make sure you are registered to vote and get out and vote. For complete election information online, go to denverdecides.com. I'm Tamara Banks. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time.